Q&A segment. You guys ask questions uh, and we give answers to the best of our ability. So I've got a question from Kevin. Uh, we've got a scenario on vacation, not doing structured exercise. How bad could weight gain slash muscle loss be if I acted like a degenerate for two weeks? Um, and so there, there's basically two questions here. Uh, talking about a two week time frame, muscle loss, and also weight gain or specifically fat gain uh, if it's happening in the context of muscle loss. When it comes to the muscle loss, uh, one to two weeks really is not a big deal. Uh, significant appreciable muscle loss really shouldn't occur over that one to two week time frame. Uh, as long as you're not like immobilized or on complete bed rest. Uh, you know, if you're going about your day-to-day -day activities, one to two weeks is not a timeline that I would be super concerned about. Uh, once we start getting to the like two to three, three to four week time frame, then I start to say, okay, now we might want to talk about some pretty uh, proactive mitigation strategies to, to make sure that we're maintaining as much muscle mass as we can. Uh, so what might that strategy be? Not just overfeeding protein. Uh, the, the research is pretty consistent. Uh, just bumping up your protein over a vacation if you're not actually loading your muscles um, is not going to save you from muscle loss. Um, if anything, your protein needs could potentially be a little bit lower since you're not training, but usually I just try to keep my protein pretty stable uh, in this type of scenario. There are some studies indicating that like really high dose leucine might be slightly helpful, uh, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Uh, the evidence is mixed. The effect sizes are not particularly large. So uh, the strategy really isn't dieting in this in this scenario when it comes to retaining muscle. Uh, if you're talking about you know three four weeks or longer, uh, it's important to recognize a little bit of resistance training goes a very long way. We're talking about body weight stuff. If you can sneak a couple bands in your travel bag, um, very basic stuff. Even if you don't have gym access, should go a very long way, and it doesn't have to be high volume. If you keep the intensity up. You know, either doing high loads if they're ver if they're available, or just pushing relatively close to failure with body weight and band type stuff. You don't have to spend two hours a day doing this stuff. Low volume, but putting in the effort uh, should be a good way to go. When it comes to fat gain, uh, I mean, to to gain a a considerable amount of fat, like if you're trying to gain a kilogram of fat assuming that there's no adaptive increase in total daily energy expenditure from overfeeding and there very well might be or just from being on vacation and walking around doing vacation stuff yeah so total daily energy expenditure very well could go up in this uh situation but even if it did it we're talking about over nine thousand calories of a surplus to store a new kilogram of fat um so i mean if you're going way overboard with uh your caloric intake I mean, no doubt some degree of fat accumulation can occur, um, but it's nothing that can't be undone uh, after the vacation's over. And the likelihood of, you know, several kilograms of fat mass gain, uh, quite implausible within this type of time frame. Um, so my typical guidance, uh, it, by the way, your weight will likely fluctuate quite a bit, uh, especially if you're you're kind of really exploring a lot of different food options and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Eating is one of my favorite things about vacations. Um, but there's a lot of water weight fluctuation, uh, you know, changing your food schedule, changing your food environment, different amount of just bulk material in the GI tract, different amount of sodium and carbohydrate, a lot of water fluctuations, but, uh, you know, in terms of fat gain, probably not too much, uh, accumulation there. My typical guidance, though, uh, when I work with one-on-one -on -one clients who are about to go on a one- or two-week trip, uh, we basically set a spectrum with two anchors. Uh, so on one end of the spectrum, the really strict end of the spectrum, we say, oh, let's keep our diet exactly the same. No accommodations, hit the same targets, weigh things the same way you normally do or track things the same way you normally do, no change at all. The other end of the spectrum is we're not just going off the diet. We are intentionally aggressively indulging you know we are really just exploring every culinary option and just 
overfeeding on a very consistent basis. Um, no targets, no tracking, no moderation. You know, if there's a, a hedonic occasion to eat, go for it, you know, past the point of fullness. Now we rarely choose either of those options that sets the spectrum. And then we talk about a variety of different options, uh, that fall between those ends of the spectrum. So, uh, we could keep macro targets as a strategy, but we could increase the targets from where they're currently at. We could keep a calorie target and a protein minimum, but say, hey, as long as you're kind of close to these calories and getting at least this much protein, you're good to go. We could not track at all, but say, hey, focus on you know, food selection and meal composition. So when you sit down for a meal, where's my protein? Where's my fibrous vegetable? Arrange a plate and kind of focus on it that way. Uh, one thing I'll do is I'll say pick one meal per day where we're really going to loosen up. So you know, keep things pretty, uh, pretty tight with breakfast and lunch. And then dinner will be the big meal where we really relax a little bit. Uh, a similar strategy, prioritize the areas where you want to indulge, right? So if you want to go out for drinks one night, you know, if, if I'm on vacation, trying to be mindful of my diet, I'll say, you know what, tonight I am having a few alcoholic beverages. So I might keep my entree, you know, a little bit leaner, you know, go with lean, you know, fish and vegetables and maybe a little starch. And then save up some calories so that I can have a little more alcohol. Uh, or, you know, you could say I'm going to go a little lighter on the entree because I really like a dessert that I have my eye on or vice versa. I'm going to skip dessert because I, you know, see this particular entree that, that has caught my eye. So there are a tremendous number of dietary strategies that you could choose ranging from very restrictive to very flexible. And what I do with my clients is I talk through a, a pretty broad variety of these and we figure out based on the context of the trip what would be the most sensible solution